Hi, I'm Jonathan Katz-Moses, and today we're going to build this Maple Burl and Ebony Spanish Cedar Humidor. Stick around at the end of the video, I'll talk about the trials and tribulations I had building this, as well as the details on how to set up a humidor. Here we go. So we're here in uh, my local hardwood dealer, Mayan Hardwoods, which is really good. They've got the biggest selection around for uh, serious woodworkers and, and their hardwood selection is really rivaled by nobody in my area. There are several wood species you can use for humidors, but Spanish cedar is the most desirable, but mahogany can also be used as well. So we're gonna build our box out of Spanish cedar and veneer the outside with a walnut burl and put some ebony inlay in there. Um, so we're gonna choose a board that can do the box and the trays as well as the interior lining. So we're gonna select a board and get going. So now that we've selected our wood, we're gonna go ahead and make our case. And our case is gonna use simple rabbit joinery for all of the corners and then to inset our plywood lid and bottom that we're then going to veneer is all gonna be rabbit joinery. And then in the interior of the box, we're gonna cut very thin strips for the interior cedar. One of the difficulties with humidors, obviously, is that on the inside of a box, you have a relative humidity, about 75%, and on the outside, you have just regular humidity, which is usually around 40%. And so you really need to kind of do some things to mitigate wood movement. We're gonna seal the interior of our box before we put in the, the inlaid pieces of cedar. Those pieces of cedar will stay kind of unfinished. Uh, our trays will stay unfinished, but the, the actual case of the box will get a couple coats of shellac on it just to seal it up and help keep it from moving. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our case pieces and get that ready to go. So let me show you how I do that. One of the things you need to watch for as you're doing assembly is these little dots of tannins here that come through on Spanish cedar. Those are real easy. You just wanna clean them up with some acetone. So uh, just keep an eye out for these and make sure you clean them up before you start sealing it in there and gluing it together. We've milled all of our lumber and cut our pieces to size. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting our rabbits. And we're gonna cut rabbits on all four sides of every piece, uh, both for the case joinery and then to accept the bottom and top piece of plywood that will be veneered. So I'm gonna switch the runner on my four in one sled here. I did a cool video on this. Uh, it has four functions. Uh, I'll link that right here in the corner, uh, as well as in the description. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut our joinery. And I'm gonna leave things a little bit longer so that we can shave the corners and get them just perfectly flush. And then we'll end up cutting a quarter inch by quarter inch groove in all the corners to accept our ebony inlay. So let me show you how we do that.
glued up. We're gonna cut our plywood top and bottom, and I'm gonna inset them. I, now I left this big on purpose, so that way I can completely flush it up. So when we go to the veneer, the outside of the box, we'll have completely flat surfaces. So what I'm gonna do is cut panels for the top and bottom. I'm gonna glue them in. I'm gonna flush everything up. I'm also going to uh, inlay some ebony in the corners. This is a big piece of ebony, huh? Once we get everything flat, we'll attach the veneer. We'll start inlaying our ebony, and then we'll release the lid, put in the hinges, and start putting in the inside pieces. So let's trim up some plywood. When you're insetting a panel into a box and you need it to fit perfectly, here's a great little trick. What I like to do is I'll take uh, some scrap pieces of wood and I take them and I space them out to the exact opening of my box here. So I've got them and then I just take some spring clamps, clamp them together, and then you have a piece that is ex the exact width of your box. And when you're doing a panel, I'll check it on both sides. So here, yep, it's good friction fit. And then over here, yeah, it's a good friction fit over here. And then if you go watch the video that I did where I talked about accuracy and woodworking, you'll see how we can then transfer those marks to a piece of wood, ensuring that it's gonna be the exact same size when we cut it. So let's get this started. got the basic structure of our box done. We've got all of our ebony inlay milled up. I think I did a little extra, but that's okay. These are perfect squares, so they'll be great in lots of projects. We're gonna get ready for veneer here, and we're gonna do that by flush trimming our box over at the router table using the beast of a router bit, the white side double bearing flush trim bit that I mentioned in the router skills video, which will be linked right here. Uh, and then we're gonna sand it and make sure everything is super flat so that it'll accept the veneer. Now, great thing about the veneer is if it goes to the edge, it doesn't matter because we're gonna be inlaying the ebony by a quarter inch. So we have a quarter inch of room all the way around. So I just wanna get everything pretty flat and make sure that it's, it's ready to accept our final substrate. So here we go. We've selected the veneer we want to use for the top and bottom of the box. Now, there's several things that are going to happen here, and I'm new to veneering, but uh, based on my limited knowledge, uh, we're going to joint our veneer by putting it between two pieces of plywood and using hand plane. We're then going to tape it and prepare it for glue up. I'm going to cut some calls on the table saw that perfectly fit the box that have some grooves in them that will allow all the air to get sucked out. I'm going to wax those boards so it doesn't stick to our veneer. And then we're going to do the top and the bottom in this vacuum bag that I got. I got this on Amazon. It was like like 25 bucks for a pack of six of them. It seems to hold pretty well, but we're gonna give it a try. And if need be, we'll stack some weight on top of it, but I think it's gonna do the job. So uh, there'll be a link down in the description to these and all the tools we use in this video. So here we go. I'm not an expert in veneer. I'm like you, just learning. So if you see anything that I did wrong, please put it down in the comments. I'd love to get better at this. So thanks so much, here we go. Okay, now that we have our box cleaned up and we've cut our clamping calls for the vacuum bag, it's time to prepare our veneer for applying. First, we're gonna joint it using, I cut just a piece of plywood that I know has a straight edge. We're gonna clamp the veneer between those, use a hand plane to make sure we have a nice glue joint. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our veneer 
ready to be glued. Now I've selected this piece of veneer for the top, the one on the bottom matches. It's a beautiful maple burl. And we'll go ahead and tape it together using some blue tape on the opposite side. I'll then wet some of this veneer tape here and we'll put that on making sure the edges are aligned perfectly. It'll then shrink, making sure this has a really tight seam. We'll then go ahead and put it on the box using some Type Bond 2 and clamp it in our vacuum bag. And while we're waiting for that to dry so we can do the sides, we'll mill up some cedar uh, for the inside of our box. So here we go. As you saw, veneer tape uh, was a disaster for me. I, I know that I'm not uh, an expert at this, so maybe veneer tape was a little bit advanced for me. So what we're gonna do is blue tape these edges together. I've rejointed them and I'm gonna blue tape them and then create a glue seam. And then we'll go ahead and, and proceed as usual. So let me show you how I do that. So while the box is drying, I'm gonna start milling up the cedar for the inside of the box. And this is something, I'm gonna resaw a board here, but if you don't have a bandsaw, you could just run it through the planer and make sure that it's just nice and thin. So here we go. veneer is done and I am excited. This came out so cool. So now's the time when you got to be careful because this is fragile. You can, you know, if you scratch it, anything like that, it, it, you really could do irreparable damage, but it is now time to do our ebony inlay. And so what we're going to do is cut a quarter inch groove into every corner and cut these to size and glue them in. And it's going to be really important that uh, our spacing is correct and we take our time with this step because you really, this is now when stuff starts to get critical, as I said. So uh, we're gonna put in our inlay, release the lid, uh, put in our hinges, put in our inside cedar material, start to put in our hydrogometer. I don't really know how to say it, but the thing that measures humidity and, and finish up the box. So um, I'm gonna start by cleaning up my corners so that there's nothing overhanging that will mess with the cut when I go in to cut those grooves. So I'm gonna just make sure everything's just got a teeny little bevel on it and there's nothing protruding. So here we go.
So we've got the inlay in, and you know, that wasn't the cleanest way I could do it, but I think that was the best way I could come up with doing it. And I'm pleased down in the comments, let me know how you would have put that inlay in, because that was a little difficult. Um, but I'm going to flush trim it up and then do an eighth inch round over on all the corners, and that's going to clean up any residual glue squeeze out. Uh, and then we're going to release the lid and put in the interior trim. So let's go over to the router table and get this done. Here's a cool little trick, just like with my stop block, um, when you're using a router plane. So I'm just a little bit proud, but with this piece of cardboard, that's exactly even. So then I'm gonna take that over to my router plane here, and I'm gonna lift up my stop, and I'm just gonna put my piece of cardboard in between my stop and my piece. I'm gonna tighten it up. So now my, my cardboard just barely slides under there. Then when I loosen my knob for lowering here, and I lower, it's gonna go right to that stop. And now I can come over here and just take off just the right amount here. Okay, so we've got our hinges in, it's really exciting. Uh, as you can see, it closes nicely. It just has a little bit of a gap, which means at one of these hinges, I just went a micrometer too deep, probably the thickness of a piece of paper. So what all you do is use a piece of paper to shim up the top hinges, which will then make it shut perfectly. Uh, now we're gonna sand everything and uh, bevel our, our inside trim here. We're gonna round over the edges of our divider and we're gonna get this thing finished up. Now, when you're sanding the outside of a veneered box, 
be very careful. I would recommend using 220 if you're gonna use a random orbit or just sanding by hand because it can get away from you really quick. Um, same thing with the hinges. When you put those in, just take your time. As you can see, I was real careful with layout. Um, so be careful with your hinges. But now, now is the time when it's really important to take your time and get things right. So uh, we're gonna sand it up, throw some lacquer on there, buff it out to a high gloss, put in our hygrometer, as well as our sponge, uh, which will help keep the humidity in the box. And then we're gonna put some cigar, well, we're gonna season it first, but in video world, it'll have some cigars in it when you see it, but then I'll take them out and do my two week seasoning period. But I am so pumped on this. So let's get it wrapped up. done so with the finish I wanted to update you guys I've done I did about four coats and then sanding with 240 in between coats and then after that fourth coat I did sanding with 320 400 and 800 I wet sanded the whole box and so that gave us the basis for what's going to be hopefully a very glass smooth finish so we're going to do one more coat here a very thinned out gloss lacquer it's about three quarters lacquer thinner to lacquer so we're gonna get that done and then put in the hardware One. No way. Wow, guys, what a fun build. I honestly think this might have been the most fun I've had building anything in a long time. Uh, this, you know, I was, there were a lot of techniques in this that I was new to, uh, that I, I really had some good learning experiences from that I wanted to share with you. One of those was veneering. And veneering is really pretty easy. You would just need to have a flat surface and a way to attach it. Um, I used these vacuum bags that'll be linked down in the description that I got on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It was a six pack. And what I found with those is that I would vacuum them with my shop vac. And then there was a pump that came with it. So after it was vacuumed and closed, I would pump it a few more times and that would get everything tight enough to really get it to attach. Um, I added clamps just because I was terrified. I didn't want it to go wrong. But it, the bag worked great and I would highly recommend it instead of buying a $300 veneer press um, if if this is something you're not going to do that regularly. The the inlay was it was tricky but it also really helped the build. The the burl did not need to have clean edges. In fact, I had a quarter inch of tolerance on all sides because I was going to cut the quarter inch groove for the ebony. Um, I attached it with super glue and regular glue, and that worked out pretty well. It was terrifying. It, things set up really fast, but as long as I used my shooting board, which I did a video on, there'll be a link here in the corner. As long as I used my shooting board to really dial in the fit, 
It came out great. I didn't use miters. I tried at the bottom and with the super glue, it was just too hard to get them perfect. But in the end, it really didn't matter because the ebony is so dark and you just really cannot see where the joints are. So uh, I don't regret not doing miters at all. It came out fabulous and, and I just, I really, I'm blown away. Um, let's talk about hardware. I used all Brusso brass hardware. This is a Brusso lift. Um, these are the Brusso 95 degrees, one and a quarter inch stop hinges. I also use these Brusso feet down here, which uh, I think really ties the box together. And it's one of those things, this is for me, this is something I plan on having the rest of my life. So I, I didn't want to put so much work into this really nice wood and then end up going cheap on hardware. So if you're gonna build this for yourself, I highly recommend you you get Brusso hardware. They're unmatched. Um, putting in the hardware is not scary. Hinges came out great. Uh, it's just a matter of taking your time, using a marking knife, and if you don't have a router plane, you can just set up two pieces of plywood on either side of the box to support the router and just go really slow with a router bit and then just take the last little bit with a chisel. Um, in fact, you saw in the video that my lid wasn't quite sitting right. And that was because I went a little bit too far on the right hinge. So I just put a shim using a piece of veneer. I just cut the size with a chisel. Doesn't need to even be that close. And that fixed the problem right up. So hinges are not scary. As long as you just take your time and, and go slow with them, they're, they're easy. Um, the veneer tape was a disaster. I since had a lesson from a neighbor of mine here who does veneering for a living and I feel a little bit more comfortable, but the blue tape worked great. I really had no problems with it. I can't even find my own seams anymore. And uh, gluing that seam made a big difference. So I glued that, let it sit for a little while so that I'd get a really nice tight glue joint in there after jointing the boards. And, and I think that really helped it come out perfect. And then with sanding and lacquer, you really, you don't see any of it. Um, as far as the finish goes, the lacquer, uh, I've got a pretty good finish on here. I feel like it could have been better. Um, I need to maybe spray it one more time because it looks like I kind of missed this corner a little bit. But the trick that I got to getting a really good finish and I've used in the past is first building a finish and then basically sanding it most of the way off, making sure you stay super flat and sanding up to a really high grit. I went through a lot of 400 and 800 sanding discs, which I don't know if I would buy those again. I'd probably just hand sand and do that. But um, I got it really, really smooth and then sprayed that last coat on there. I might do a little bit of buffing, uh, but I'm gonna wait a few more days to see how it cures out and kind of then make an assessment. Um, on the, the inside of the box, I used, I, I used some cheap, uh, a cheap hygrometer and sponge set up here, which I'm gonna replace, which is why I didn't flush mount these in there. Uh, I just attached them to the surface because, you know, again, I, I spent so much time and uh, invested so much in this that I'm gonna upgrade to something nicer. It's just, sometimes when you're doing video production, you need stuff right away. So I ordered what I could get in two days on Amazon and I now have ordered some, some really nice stuff and I'll update that on my Instagram. You should go check me out at jcatsmoses. Uh, the, the center divider with the red felt, that's a very traditional thing with the felt. Uh, you could use a piece of leather or uh, anything else that would be nice soft cork. Uh, but the purpose of that is it really creates, the, the felt creates a friction fit. It also can hold your side pieces in in case you know you get a excess moisture content in there and your inside pieces start to bow. One of the things that you need to worry about with a humidor more than with most projects is humidity. And that's the reason you use Spanish cedar or some people will use mahogany for humidors. The, the interior humidity in a humidor needs to be 65 to 70%. Usually it's about 70%. And so that can cause a lot of expansion and contraction. And cedar is one of those woods, a Spanish cedar is one of those woods that really has a great retention uh, when faced with moisture. So uh, I didn't end up shellacking the inside of the box. I read conflicting reports on that and I decided to just leave it alone because if really I was having a problem, I could go back and shellac it later. But I highly recommend uh, leaving that and, and just going with the natural wood. Um, you've got the veneer on the outside, but you know, it, it really, I don't think 
would help you any to shellac it. This again was so fun to build and it actually, a lot of it was really easy. You know, the corners are just rabbit joints, no fancy joinery. Uh, everything is just a box with things glued to it and then putting in the hardware was easy. So it, it's the, the difficulties of humidor come with the accoutrements, you know, the, the fancy stuff you put on there and that's the veneer and the hardwood. So I highly recommend this build. It's not, as hard as it looks and it really is fun and you get something that really is useful you know for me i smoke probably five cigars a year on special occasions but still it's just one of those pieces i can leave out in my house and kind of show off my woodworking skills so i think that part of it is so neat um when you're setting up a humidor and again let me preface this by saying i'm not an expert at this this is just through kind of extensive research is you build it and then you need to season it and that you can do with a sponge and water. You leave it in there for a couple weeks. Uh, one of the important parts of a humidifier is an airtight seal. Um, so you wanna make sure that your inside pieces of cedar create that for you. Um, so once you season it and get it up to temperature, you can then put in your sponge and you need to use to avoid any mold, you need to use distilled water or one thing that was highly recommended to me was this propylene glycol. It stops fungus, it keeps worms from going, and you don't have to do anything. I just pour this in the sponge and it's ready to go. Another thing I used was this hygrometer calibrator. It's a bag that's guaranteed to be at 75% moisture. I just threw my hygrometer in there and it, it read 74%. Uh, so I could adjust it a little bit. There was a screw on the back. So that's how you charge a humidor. And so I've got cigars in this now. Uh, as you can see, I'm pretty excited about that, but I'm actually going to take these out and throw them in a plastic bag and charge this up for a couple weeks. Um, this actually was my wife's mother. My mother-in-law brought this to me from the Cohiba plant in Cuba. So I've got this in there. It's not a great cutter. Um, I've got this new fangled style that just takes a little nibble off the end. That's pretty cool, but I love having that Cohiba cutter in there. I think that's really neat. Um, guys, thank you for sticking around here till the end. Uh, go over to my Instagram. We did lots and lots of build shots of this over on Instagram, uh, through my Instagram stories. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment. All of your comments are read and really appreciated. Your support means the world to me, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and stay safe in the shop.